Um, I first met Gautam and Stephanie in the late 1990s, not long after Gautam <coughs> had taken charge of the Papa group of companies. In the intervening decade, he has transformed those companies into one of India's most dynamic and outward-looking family corporate houses with a growing global footprint. <clears throat> the story of that transformation begins, of course, as the story of Gautam's inspired leadership. His remarkable directness, clarity of vision, and his utter impatience with self-importance. But as Gautam is the first to recognize, that story of individual character also parallels a remarkable change in India's own fortunes and horizons. As India's economy grows, its global ambitions have risen. Its politics, though, have become more complicated, and its social opportunities remain unequally spread. It's an open-ended, dramatic historical turning in one of the world's great civilizations, and that has drawn the world's attention to India and made India engage more intensively with the world at large. To understand India's search for innovative solutions to its dilemmas, and its search for a distinctive role in the world, that's something I've been trying to do in my own work and to try and track over the past decade and more. Can India's search for wealth and power, for justice and liberty, somehow redefine the world's habitual understandings of those terms? That is one great challenge that India's rise poses. Such challenges and such themes are the animating impulses of the India Institute's activities in our postgraduate teaching, in our research, in our engagement with the policy community, and in our involvement with the world of art and culture. Of course, a good part of what we will be doing is holding that Indian story up to the cold light of analysis in order to separate legend from reality. And the motiv motivating question always will be, how can India do better at home and abroad? In just a few months, we've made a pretty energetic start on this ambitious agenda, and the principal has mentioned some of the, the, those initiatives. We have a terrific faculty in place, Louise Tillin, Kriti Kapila, uh, Jepchan Bifalke, Rudra Chaudhary, who are in the room tonight, but also Christophe Jaffrelot, Jaffre Sciences Po, John Wilson, Ian Jack, and others. We have a, an excellently designed Masters and PhD program. We've established very good working relationships with the Government of India's Ministries of Culture and, and the External Affairs Ministry. Um, and we're working on building capacity with the Government of India. We've got relations with the Foreign Office here, with the business world, and with research funders, the British Academy and Ukiere, um, and with leading think tanks in the US like Carnegie and elsewhere. We have in place an outstanding senior advisory council, several of whose members are here this evening, including Gautam himself, Sir Michael Arthur, uh, Avik Sarkar, who I think was going to be here, but I'm not sure if he's yet here, Catherine Wu, um, <coughs> and, and others. Um, and all of this before our formal inauguration, which will take place, as the principal has said, on January 26th, and in which we now have an acceptance from the Foreign Secretary, William Hague, to speak on that occasion. So please reserve that date in your diaries and invitations will, will follow. But this is an evening to celebrate what will in many ways be the centerpiece of the India Institute, Gautam and Stephanie Thapa's magnificent gift which creates the Avanta Chair. The chair will be held by the director of the Institute and its purpose is to advance the aims of the India Institute in the fields of research and scholarship, teaching, policy, and institution building. And I feel very privileged to be the first holder of the Avanta Chair. I'm truly grateful to Gautam for his generosity and vision in creating it. It's a great investment and endorsement of the India Institute at this early stage of its life. <coughs> Gautam is one of a rare breed in India's corporate world, not just in his discretion and in his disinterest in the bright lights, but as one who understands that in addition to the balance sheet, we need to think long term and strategically about India's economic and geopolitical future, and to develop the capacity and expertise to build that future. When we first spoke about the Institute, the India Institute, 
Gautam was eloquent about his sense of how, at this moment of India's economic boom, we seemed so short of ideas, of long-term vision. It was his idea to support the India Institute, and there has been a remarkable clarity to his engagement with us. Once he had made the decision, we got to the result very quickly. That's an ethos we in the academic world can learn from, and I look forward to a long and instructive partnership with Gautam and Stephanie Papra and with the Avanta group, as we at the India Institute come to play our own part in engaging with India's future and its place in the world. May I invite us all to raise a glass to Gautam